So your back pain can re be really debilitating when you're going through your strongman program. And I think, unfortunately, due to the loads that you're gonna to start to lift and the positions that you're having to lift in, back pain is often uh, a, an inevitable consequence of your strongman training. Now, managing that back pain is obviously of paramount importance. And as I've said in previous videos, if you follow us on our Instagram page, we've talked about back pain a lot on there. I believe that you're, as far as your brain's concerned, that your back, your spine, has a really high level of hierarchical importance. So when you get back pain, unlike when you get elbow pain, wrist pain, knee pain, or hip pain, you tend to find you can work through that. The spasms in your back usually mean that you're unable to work through it. Now, stopping training is the worst thing you can do because again, your brain needs movement to calm down the muscle spasms and all the things that start to take place. But using the same loads as you've been previously using, is probably unwise. So you might need to scale back, again use a different RPE, so that you're not loading the spine with as much weight as you were, but you're instead just concentrating on drilling the movement. So you're using it from a technical perspective as opposed to a load perspective. And there's merit in that. You know, if you can improve the efficiency of your movements, you're gonna find that when, you start, when your back starts to get better and you start to able to add some weight back onto that movement, because you're moving more efficiently, that weight will feel lighter and your PBs will start flying. So you've got two types of back pain. You've either got extension sensitive back pain, so it hurts when you start to arch your back, so maybe in the lockout of your deadlift, um, as you're going into your push press position, your log press, as you're starting to arch the back, it causes pain there, in which case I'm gonna show you a flexion mobility exercise to reduce your extension back pain, or you've got flexion sensitive back pain. And now we're going to use an extension movement to reduce that flexion pain. So lying on your front, this is if you've got pain when you bend forwards, we're going to spend some time just camping out in this position. Now this is Mackenzie 1 and it's simply a rest position. So you're going to spend 15 to 20 minutes as often as you want throughout the course of the day, ideally away from training because what we don't want to do is loosen everything off before you go and lift. But any time through the course of the day, you can jump into this position and you're just going to spend 15 or 20 minutes allowing everything to relax. Now if that's comfortable and that doesn't exacerbate current back pain, we're going to move into Mackenzie 2. So on a different day, you don't need to spend 40 minutes in these positions going from one position to the next. So this is now Mackenzie 2 and as you can see, I'm starting to encourage a little bit more back extension. Now again, it's a, it's a rest position. So 15 to 20 minutes of an evening, watching TV, lying on the floor, annoying your missus or your mister, and that's Mackenzie 2. Now if that doesn't cause you any problems and it feels like it relieves your back pain, then you can move on to Mackenzie 3, which is basically like a prone cobra. So keeping the hips on the floor, pushing yourself back as if you were doing a push-up and just trying to encourage your back into that extension position. And again, this should feel relieving rather than aggravating. So flexion sensitive back pain, pain when you bend forwards, do Mackenzie 1, 2 or Mackenzie 3. Right, so if you have extension sensitive pain, so pain when you bend your back backwards, this is the movement for you. So in this position, feet on a bench or a chair or a settee, you're gonna simply get yourself comfortable and then we're gonna tilt our pelvis backwards to flatten our back onto the floor and then relax. Tilt the pelvis backwards, flatten your back onto the floor and then relax from Tilt the pelvis backwards, flatten your back into the floor. So if you watch my pelvis, you can see my pelvis goes from what I call a neutral position into a posterior pelvic tilt, then back into neutral. Posterior pelvic tilt, back into neutral. Now don't rush these, these are you know, they're relaxation positions, they're designed to reduce muscle spasm, reduce the hypersensitivity of your nervous system, so you reduce pain sensation. 
and I'd like you to do 30 seconds, take a break, and then do a further 30 seconds, and then see how your back feels. Now when you're getting off the floor after you've been doing either movement, either McKenzie or your posterior pelvic tilt mobilization, I want you to roll onto your side and then push yourself up from the side into sitting because that will protect your back after you've loosened it off. Right, final piece for those of you struggling with your backs. We're now going to try and mobilize your hips. Now the band is all about creating space in the hip joint and your hips, they're the powerhouses of your body. So all that power when you push press in, when you log press in, when you're squatting, when you're deadlifting, all that power comes through the hip joints. These get stiff, they, that, them getting stiff then knocks into your spine getting stiff, your spine gets stiff and then when you start to load your spine, you're loading it in crappy positions and that's often what leads to back pain. So power band attached to your squat rack, something immovable, push back, so you're going to create some tension on the band, grab your knee and we're going to go knee to shoulder, knee to the outside of the same shoulder, and back, knee to shoulder, knee to outside of the same shoulder, knee to shoulder, knee to outside of the same shoulder. Now I'd like to do 30 seconds on your left leg, 30 seconds on your right leg, and that's the first part of that movement. We're now going to move into a floss, so again, same position, and what we're going to try and imagine doing here, so rather than bring the knee to the chest, is bend and straighten the bottom of your leg. So straighten the leg up, bring that leg down. Straighten the leg up, bring that leg down. Now this is a floss for your hamstrings. So if you have got some, what I'd class as being neurological symptoms, so some tightness in your glutes and some tightness in your hamstrings, do this before you do your, after you've done your hip mobility, and you should find that when you're into your squat position, everything feels a bit more comfortable. Now, if you're still struggling with your back, even after doing these movements, you'll find that reducing range of movement, so taking your, your squat into a box squat, protects your back, and taking your deadlift into something like a block pull, again, it takes the first pull out of the movement, and means, again, you can keep training without the need to overload your back in that bottom position.